Good news, everyone. Click. That's the last one. Yeah, I cheated. I cheated hard. So I, got, I found all 12 small red gemstones. Shout out to, uh, crap. Kuposar. The Final Fantasy thing. And also dinosaurs mixed together. That's the username. He has a video that has all 16 of each type of gem found in locations. I'm, all, I'm not doing all of them. That's a pain in the ass. But I wanted to do the damage one because I'm like, damn it, I want one of these. Like, normally I wouldn't do something like that necessarily, but I just like, I'm ready to beat the game, basically. I'm like, at the point where like, I can reasonably finish the entire game with my character build and also I'm running out of d stuff to do and I'm like, that I, I, it bothers me that the gems were there, like, taunting me. It's like, there's a whole mechanic here and you're never gonna get to use it! Because there's like this whole multi-tier crazy system where you can go all the way, you get six... 16 small gems and combine them to make one mega gem and I'm like I want to do that at least once in this series, right? But the problem is that if I was gonna find those naturally, I was gonna have to like Very slowly and methodically explore this map for like 50 more episodes just for that one purpose And I'm like that's wow doing that naturally is not good not good video content and not fun Is an issue and it actually raises question. It's been it's, the whole thing has been very in uh informative about this game, I suppose. Because it's- I'm trying to question why they put those gems in the game, and why they're put like that, and stuff like that, and I'm like, is it- it- is that- is that a good mechanic or not? And I'm thinking it's not. Because this map- this world's really big. This world's really, really big, and somewhere along this entire map are 16 gems per color. Just anywhere. Where do you find them? Totally nonsensical locations. I've done them all, and they're, they're so, so. Let's go, uh, rewind a little bit. Uh, this place is really big, which serves like if you just want to have an epic world environment, so that it feels like oh look, there's a travel time from that place to like that place, so it feels like it's a reasonably large place, so it makes the world believable. Then that's fine. I get that much. But if your goal is to make it uh, something you're supposed to explore, like Breath of the Wild, for example, then it's bad. Like, only one of these two things can be good. The other one is not good. And the reason for that is that this is not a detailed, rich world. It's easy to look out at this misty vista and be like, Oh, look at this place. But when you actually are forced to, like, walk around and try to explore this place and look around at it, you quickly realize it's like the same building copy-pasted over and over again everywhere you go. It's like, oh, what's the- you're in the desert? Well, there's three desert buildings, and when you're in the forest, there's like three forest buildings, and they just copy-paste the same building over and over and over again, and you just- so you're- there's nothing to explore, because you're just finding the same buildings over and over again with the same small health potions and elex, and like, it's the same buildings with the same items everywhere you go. There's no- there's no exploration and sense of discovery to be had. Therefore, the natural way of getting these gems is not a good- Gameplay loop. It's not a it's not it would be fun for no people presumably Because the world is not detailed and rich and full of things to discover besides Just those gems basically So that's just not a good conduit and the good evidence for that was the fact that I went to every single one of them and This is the only place I found this is why I I, I brought started this episode here This is the only gem that it wasn't, uh, some random building, basically. Like, one of them was... Admit admittedly, one of them was in that place where I went deep underground to get that special item recently for the main story. There was just a gem upstairs in that building I'm like, that I missed. Aside from that, they're all just in a random building. Like, you know that one apartment? You know that one, like, high-end house we see in the forest every day that has two floors and maybe somebody's keeping staying there and maybe they're not, but it's just like that one two-floor house that's in every, that's all over the place from the old world in the forest? Yeah, like three gems were in those. It's the same house over and over again, and it's like, this is... It's just, it's awful. <laughs> it's awful places to, like, no one should ever have to go through the process of actually finding those naturally, because it's just... It's just not a good time, but hey! The last gem took me here, which has at least one named NPC named Lucky Sam. So he might have something for me, so I'm, I'm kind of pumped about that. So hey, this pointed me towards something that I might have not found otherwise. And arrows. Oh yeah! And one story thing happened, kind of, which is that the... <laughs> that one that one archer kid that was out with the, hunt, the older hunter and the kid's like, Help me get my bow! I need my bow back! I'm not good enough! 
I need to earn the respect of Hunter Man. Uh, he died. It just he. I just I just I saw him off in the distance and, and like a, a giant monster just destroyed him, and then he just died. And I was like, oh shit. Uh, all right. And I like as an ultimate form of spitting on that guy's grave. The game didn't bother to say, this will really affect the for future of the story, like it does every time, every other time I see someone die, usually. In this case, it was like, nah, he doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, cold shoulder from the game. No pop about how the game will remember this, because the game doesn't give a shit about that kid. I, I didn't do it this time. I didn't lure monsters to him. It was, I literally just looked over, I'm like, oh look, the simulation decided that he shall die now. Huh. So, has word spread that there's a Lexit to be earned here? Grab your cock and get ready to rock, because we've got some great scrap out there just waiting to be dug up. Look for pieces with a high concentration of Elix. Those are what the buyer will want. Come on, let's get moving! You're confused. I'm not a scrap collector. Wait a moment. If you're not here to help us, if you're not here, you must be a bounty hunter. Do I look like a bounty hunter? Yeah, but all right, I don't see why you deny it. So let's both just calm it down, okay? I am calm. Good, right. Just don't go stressing me, all right? You've got rich with scrap. Don't let your eyes shine so fast. It's not an easy business. Some sites yield nothing, and the good ones are getting harder to find. Then there's all the extra expenses you need to keep your scrap collectors happy. They like the entertainment district, you see? All those costs. It means I rely on the bonuses to get by. So who buys this stuff? The scrap baron, who else? Unless anyone else comes with a better deal. But there are always problems with old connections. People who think they're owed something. Who are you having problems with? One of the Scrap Baron's ass kickers, Trevor. He thinks his connections mean he can take our scrap for nothing. If he paid properly, he'd get the business. All he cares about is the delivery. Maybe you can help us after all. Would you take care of cutting all connections to our old employer? We've got to make a living out here. And with what Trevor tries to pay us, well, that's not really giving us an opportunity to do that. If you can get us out of this, I'll make it worth your while. First, I want to hear his version of the story. Speaking isn't going to change Trevor's mind, but sure, go ahead and try. Just remember, I'm here to make a deal when you decide you can be more forceful. Is that how you live out here? By scavenging? Scavenging? I'm not here to pick up a few tin cans. I'm out here to get rich. They call me Lucky Sam, and I am the best scrap dealer you'll find in Tavar. What will earn me the most shards? Anything with a good concentration of Elix in it. The higher the concentration, the more I'll pay you for it. If you find something of interest, sell it to me. I'm always looking for scrap, and you need shards. And if you're looking for salvage, I'll take your shards for it. Do you want to trade? Very well. Very well. That was a bit of a tone change. Whoa. Oh, never mind. That's how many I have. I th for a brief moment there, I thought he was selling them for 49. I'm like, holy crap. What kind of stuff does he sell? Wow, basically just scrap. He has nothing interesting to sell, does he? What a disappointing character who's supposed to specialize in this kind of stuff. Oh well, I'm pretty sure I have stuff to sell. These iron bars I have for some reason. And this hammer I picked up that clerics use. Get, out, get rid of that. I don't think we're ever going to have a use for that one. Probably should just put my normal stuff back on at this point. I do find it interesting how this game is so ruthless with its simulation. At any given moment, a random monster can just be like, Yeah, that character's dead now. And I've kind of just been okay with letting it play out and just seeing what happens. Because it's just a thing that keeps happening. Like, oh yeah, that guy's dead now. And that guy's dead now. And that guy's dead now. I'm like, damn. How does anyone survive in this universe with the frequency at which uh, named characters die casually in, in moments? 
didn't they have to survive in this world for like I don't know 20 40 years depending on the person before in order to get that far I'm just wondering how they I guess it was just everyone's having a bad like a week of bad days and it just all happens to be syncing up across so many different characters all I can think about. I might look up where the... If I'm at, while I'm at it. I don't, I don't know how many times I can bring myself to do that, though. I am tempted to get all the pieces of that one picture or, or map or whatever so I can open that one safe because I'm curious what's inside. But how many how many times am I going to collect 16 things? Ah, it occurs to me now. There's probably 16 pictures. There's probably 16 pieces of the map. There's probably... We know that there's 16 of each gem. So they had a specific fixation on the number 16. It's interesting. I think it's really telling for the quality of this game's exploring that I I did 150 episodes of of, uh, of uh, Breath of the Wild and had a fantastic time exploring and running around and everything. And I had and in that time I found a significant percentage of the game's overall things there are to find. Yet, I've now played nearly 100 episodes of this game, which is, like, it's that that's comparable. And for most of the things that per, that in any way measure your progression in this game, the, uh, the gems, the pieces of the maps and stuff like that, all the things that seem to have 16 parts, I have, like, 25% of each one. It's because the th there's a there aren't really tools to help you track down these things, and also the things themselves aren't in interesting or important locations, so you're just not going to really find them, I guess, which is a bummer. It's just unlikely you're really going to track many of them down. Where's this other guy? So he's just right down there, like past this pit. I don't think I f I took I mean I took I took the main path up here, so I, I don't think there was a teleporter, unfortunately. That's too bad. But there is a pit down there with a big monster in it. Let's go ruin that guy. Hey, buddy. Alright, well, they tried. I see. But he must die. I guess I was missing most of the time. You know what? I should let him leave the death zone so I can kill him where I can loot him. Hey, come up here, dude. That's nice of you. Take that and your robot cod piece. Why does he have a... He only has a cod piece. It's an interesting setup he's got there. Oh, I don't know what you were locking onto. There we go. Anyway... That guy. That guy. And Cyclops. Apparently I've got a decent heap of natural elex, just I guess over the course of the crap I've been doing. Because that, that store, I, I apparently had 49. So I guess I can make more of those potions. I guess I've just happened to loot a lot of elex off of dudes during my adventure. I was not conscious of it. But I have been really casually killing elite enemies constantly. Because this bow has made the game so non-threatening most of the time. It qu it falls apart very quickly the moment there's a huge number of enemies. I'm like, I can't. I can't. I can't hit them in time. And they're all interrupting you with their attacks and stuff. And you're like, I can't fight back. What am I going to do? And you're just in trouble. Your ability to hit targets is... A, it's, a, it's a journey sometimes. Thankfully, the ammo is cheap. It definitely would eat away at your money a lot that it costs two... It costs you two elex per every single one. But at this point, that's a pretty fine amount of money. Somebody was throwing knives at this tree. That circle was their target. I... So, somehow, I don't think they're safe to do that anymore around here with all the, the baddies. The place is pretty taken over. Oh yeah, Nasty's my companion right now. I don't know where she went. <laughs> I don't know where she is. She was here like 10 minutes ago. I guess that's not the right number because I think this episode's already more than 10 minutes long. But uh, she was here recently and she seems to have disappeared. Hey Trevor. 
Are we gonna have a nice talk? Pretty isolated here. Yeah, and? Are you upset because there aren't enough plants to talk to? Everything here belongs to the Duke. That means everything I find here goes straight to the Scrap Baron. His answer to goods going missing is to rip whoever takes it a new one, and I don't want any new holes. What the Scrap Baron doesn't see, the Scrap Baron doesn't know. <laughs> sure. You think the Scrap Baron got where he is without sniffing BS like that at a mile? He'd know. I'd be dead. Forget it. Why are you so scared of the Scrap Baron? Uh, I don't know. Maybe because he's a cold-blooded, profit-obsessed nut job? You don't get made lord of all salvage by the Duke by uh, talking nicely to people. And the Scrap Baron is one of the Duke's main guys up at the fort. So it's fear, not loyalty? <laughs> loyalty? This is Tavar. Nobody's loyal to anything but shards here. You don't mess with the Duke or the Scrap Baron. Not if you want to keep all your body parts attached to the rest of your body. And he does pay. We all get our share of the profit. Can I ask a question while you're talking? No. <laughs> what do you want to know? I want to know what you know about, you know, this place. The desert, Tavar, all of Magalon. What happened here? Have you never asked yourself that? I mean, we live amongst the ruins of the old world, but what do we really know about it? Why do you want to know? <laughs> I spend every day picking this stuff up, and we just sell it, break it up for components, melt it down. But I don't know anything about the people who made them, uh, who they were, or, or what happened to them. I mean, do you never ask yourself that? I mean, if you just look at all this stuff, their world was full of this technology. Do you never wonder what our world could have been if whatever happened hadn't happened? The past is dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it is. If scrap's so important, why are you here on your own? Yeah, the fort sent a gang to work with me, but they stole the scrap instead of delivering it. We had a deal, but they had guns. I'm just glad they didn't plug me before they went. Maybe they didn't deliver the scrap because you didn't pay them. You think I owe Sam and his men? They owe me. They owe me a scrap delivery. They don't care if I'm dead. They're only interested in the scrap they got. And without that scrap, I'm dead. Why did you let them get away with it? <laughs> well, begging wouldn't get me anywhere, and there are too many to threaten. And I'm not going looking for them on my own. If the scrap baron is pissed, he'll have to come and find me here. So, you've given up. It shouldn't be my problem. If the Scrap Baron wants the scrap, he should be helping me stop those guys. He's the one with the reputation. But now, it's too late. The Scrap Baron blames me and my time is running out. I can help you. And I'm supposed to just trust you like that? Last time I trusted someone, they ran off on me and landed me in this situation. Why do you want to help me at all? because you are going to pay me. You're in for profit? Well, that makes sense. Yeah, good job I didn't pay those assholes what I'd promised. Now I've got the shards to pay you instead. Huh. And you wonder why they're turning against you. Hey, are you here to judge me now? Just help me, okay? I'm just lacking in ideas. If you think of one, let me know. I met with Sam. So, does he still have that stupid grin on his face? Yeah, I, I don't even wanna know. Let him grin as much as he wants. The main thing is that you got him to work for me again.
As far as I can see, he had more than one reason to stop working. What are you talking about? Right, right, the pay was crap, the food was worse, but he's a damn scavenger. You see how they get treated in the fort? I treat them like kings, kings! You think the scrap baron showers me in shards? You think he wants those trash pickers to be rolling in Alexit? So, did you get that trash weasel to work for me again? Not yet. Well, then don't stand around and get moving. I will get your man to start working. All right. Let's hear how you think you can do it. Either they'll do it willingly, or I will force them back to work. All right, but don't go crazy. They're, they're not going to help me if they're dead. On one hand, he's the dude that's not paying them. But on the other hand, they're like, yeah, kill that guy. Like, they're... Like, the other party is the one that, like, their first reaction is like, Yeah, murder! Whereas this guy is like, What? This is how shit works! Everything sucks! But also, he was maybe making some mistakes in the process, too. Speaking of history, I did get a couple of random audio logs when I was running around. Let's see... That's the actual correct place? Yeah, the truth is told. Dawkins has to disappear. Dr. Charles Adam Dawkins. He was the chief architect of this whole plan, and then he goes and talks to the media. Now the truth's out. There's panic. That's only going to make it harder to get the job finished. He knows we can't save everyone, so what's the stupid bastard playing at? Right, this is it. They're using the satellite program as cover for something called Kalan. Whatever it is, it's way bigger than Infinite Skies is admitting. Military research, tax dodge, whatever it is, Kalan can bring this company down. But I'm going to have to get further in. Tower Alpha 7 to Tower Delta 4. Emergency. Send a team to Quadrant Bob Charlie 03 immediately. Tower Alpha 7 to Tower Delta 4. Just have a good look around, damn it. Somewhere above, to the left. Tower Alpha 7 to Tower Delta 4. Reinforcements have still not arrived yet. Send a general distress signal now. There is something wrong here. Something very wrong. The doctor banned me from his lab right before the breakthrough. I'm gonna call Laurie. I know that will get me fired worse if they find out, but, but Laurie is the only one I know who can find out what's going on. I, I believe in this project. Why are they hiding these results? So that's the main stuff. The uh, military, the three military messages to roll from a single random building that was a copy paste of every build of buildings we've seen everywhere. But it had military recordings in it. And then the, uh, that underground facility, where they had to do for the main story, uh, it is where the majority of the other ones were. That's where we, we encountered stuff about another doctor in the past, just different audiologues for different people that worked there. They might come together to, point, to paint some kind of picture. Still throws me for a loop that my weapon's glowing, but, like, doesn't seem to have any elemental damage, I think. Unless I've missed that. About Trevor's scrap delivery. Take these shards. That should make it worth delivering to Trevor again. Shards talk. You really put something together there. But for this much, I'd look for scrap in Zaycor. You know how to make deals. We'll start making deliveries to Trevor again. I just hope he pays out more shards from now on. Otherwise, you might start finding our bodies out here. Speak to Trevor. Nothing to do with you, hey? Tell him he can count on the delivery. Only don't expect him to pay much for the information. <laughs> it's always, it always plays a sound like something bad happens. Like, oh no, what a tragedy! You didn't get these guys to kill each other over a pay dispute in uh, during doing hard work in the desert. Trevor might be in some trouble though. Their first response was like, yeah, maybe we should murder. And it's like, oh, that's not, it's not a good starting point when you have a a union dispute, basically. <laughs> Also, I like how they, 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 Trevor has apparently no idea where they are. It's like, they're right up there. They're like, down the road from you, practically. In a big facility with, like, buildings and, like, beds and shit. 
the only thing near you. I guess there's that. Huh. Well, if that's all there was, then that, that was briefer than I thought it would be. I thought, I, I thought that looked like a whole town. Your men will work for you again. Hmm. Huh. I guess you're really persuasive. You want the details? No. The fact it works is enough. The Scrap Baron will be pleased he's getting his scrap, which means he'll be pleased with you. And I will be happy with you if you pay me. Right, right. Here, take this. I've added a bit more to show I'm not holding anything back, right? Shows that he probably doesn't have that much money. Because the payment I gave them to just get past this problem uh, was twice as much as he ended up paying me for fixing the problem, and that's just payment given to me single-handedly as opposed to being split amongst a large group. So he probably just doesn't have money, frankly. Oh well. And yeah, I'm not ex I'm not exaggerating at all when I say that that's all I found. <laughs> I went through and got all 16, well, the 12 remaining uh, red shards that I didn't have before. And that quest is the only interesting thing that was near any of them besides a few places I've been to before that where I just hadn't found the exact scra uh, shard before. It's just Commander, disappointing. Supplies located. Thanks, you four. Follow me. God damn you four, you a badass. Even when I'm not even when you're not in the party, you're just like, hey, more Elex. Here you go, buddy. Here's the firehorn sword, so I need to remove the bonus damage gem. That's why. There we go. But yeah, like, I'm like, I, I specialized in this damn jewel stuff. I think I had to spend a, yeah, I, did, I had to spend, like, a gemstone socket, a skill. I spent a whole skill point on this, on this crap. I'm not gonna let it go to waste, even if the game seems to want me to. Large red gemstone. Plus 10 bonus damage. There we go. I did it. I have one of them. You, look how many times you have to do that. There's, oh my god, there's five different colors. That took forever. I'm so not doing that. But there we go. Now we can say we did it once. It gives me plus 10 damage on a weapon that has 78, so it's a really... Uh, so my 78 damage does fire damage, and it does 30% bonus damage, and it does plus 10. Those are, those are good bonuses. Ain't complaining about the bonuses. It's, it's a not... Like, it's a not insignificant bonus, so I'm not- I don't think it's wrong that it's somewhat difficult to get. It's just that it's like, no, you have to have- you have to basically achieve 100% map exploration to get it. And I'm like, that's probably not the best approach. Let's see, how am I doing on natural elex? I didn't actually check. So I'm now at... 60 again? Damn, alright, let's get 30 liquor and do this again. I need 15 more. That's the loop, it's a two it's a two to one ratio between Elex and liquor. Then you get to just mass produce some more of this crap. Amongst the wonders lies danger. So remember, don't just carry a weapon. Oh, I have enough for that too if I have two natural Elex. Eh. Sometime later, perhaps. Find safe places to stop. I don't even know if I have a goal for where to put them yet, but I'll do it. I have 50 more points again. All right. Damn. Was it 85? Yes. That's the requirement for getting the max upgrade on ranged weapons, right? Yeah, I should do that. There we go. 15 more points to spend if I want to. See, Jonesy was right here, right? Jonesy, where'd you go? Oh, hey, look, one of the dead... Oh, hey. A combat robot died in this room. Hey, Jonesy. You're not Jonesy. Jonesy has a hat. It's Jonesy, but Jonesy's not by the stairs. Jonesy... Jonesy, why do you have to walk around the map so much? I don't know where you are. Everyone looks really similar in this game. Jonesy, why do you make my life hard? I just want a combat upgrade, Jonesy. Jonesy, come back. 
Jonesy. Where the hell did Jonesy go? He was just here. How did he get away so fast? Come back. Uh, there's so many nameless people everywhere. They're not Jonesy. Jonesy? Why can't you stand still like NPCs do? It's so handy when they do that. And why can't this thing let me highlight the thing I want? He's back there? What? I was just there. Where is he hiding? Wait, is he right? He wasn't there a second ago, was he? Jonesy! Make me good at guns. There we go. Who knew that training weapons would be so easy? It might be the last combat point I, sp I buy. This is like... I think this one is like shield knockback or something? I mean, I could get it just in case. I don't know. I forgot what it was. I looked. I had to look it up at some point because it was like something that was like blatantly different from uh, what the game explains it as being. Let's get a rest on. Now I'm absurdly powerful and dangerous. In case I wasn't already. So we now have maximum level armor. We have the maximum uh, reputation level armor at the very least. What ring am I wearing right now? Whoa. That's a bunch of resistances. That's two mental energy. Are those about the same thing? Oh, they're just faction based, right? Am I wearing the Ring of Toughness right now? I am. That's 20 health, 10 stamina, 5 strength. A lot of the rings are not very encouraging, are they? Could just do resist all, I suppose. I was thinking of amulet, though. Right, I'm storing the lockpicking one instead of the practitioner one. Is wearing practitioner still worth it, though? Like, we're so over at this point, right? That's plus two combat. Plus two survival. What does plus two combat mean, though? Isn't it just plus two to my combat tier? Like, like dialogue options? Seems kind of negligible. Let's do amulet of protection. Let's, it's some health and armor. Adds to the top. Yes, it, it's a not completely ignorable amount of armor. It's, it's uh, about half as much as my legs and helm. Nowhere near my chest piece, but still. Let's go with combat items now instead of progression items. I think it's finally time to just revel in the stats my character has as opposed to wearing stuff that will make him better over time. At this point, it's time to go back. As you may remember, uh, last episode or whatever, like we just did the, the chapter transition, and I kind of warped away to do other stuff. All right, you. Out of here. They just silently die in the distance, not even a sound. Here we are. Yeah, we just- we just started the new chapter and I don't think I even have a quest yet, really. Yeah, not really. I need to talk to him to start this chapter that we've started. So, what are your plans for getting into the Ice Palace? The Alps will move the bulk of their forces to the borders of Zaykor. We need to take out those positions. That will open the way for a direct assault. What I need to know first is whether the Separatists will help us with this attack, or if they attack us as we move against Zaykor. Are you ready? Your plan is a frontal attack. We've scouted the Ice Palace, and now is the time to strike. The Albs have moved their forces. They trust too much in those energy barriers of theirs. All we need to do is take out the barrier generators, and we will open our way in. Your raider is perfect for that task. That's why we need it. What will make you trust the Separatists? The same as it took to trust you. I want to see them start shooting at Alps. Actions speak more than words. Actions earn trust. 
One raider won't stop an army. The Alb's biggest weak point is Elex. With the converters gone, we've cut off their new supplies. Now, we need to take out what they have stockpiled. How are we going to destroy the barrier generators? We crippled a similar generator when we attacked the converter here in Idan. All we had to do was target the ventilation port. It took one shot from our ballista to cripple the generator, and that brought the shield down. Your raider cannon has a lot more power than a ballista. So, if you hit the generator's ventilation port at full power, it will blow and the Ice Palace will lose its defense. And what if your plan to transmute all their Elix stocks doesn't work? If they still have their Elix, we can't fight the Alb army. We will have to target their commanders instead. If we kill the Alb commanders in charge of the defenses around the Ice Palace, the resistance should crumble. With them dead, the soldiers won't stop us getting into the Ice Palace. So, what are you planning to do when you get to the hybrid? Heal him. If we can bring him into contact with a seedling, it will transmute the Elex within him, changing his nature. We can heal him as we heal the planet. To reach the hybrid, we will need the code to his chamber. Don't you think I know that? But none of my prisoners have known the code or would give it up. All I have discovered is that it has something to do with the hybrid's past. But what? The Alexiters are the only ones with access to the hybrid. Anyone below that rank can't enter the chamber unless the hybrid calls them personally. Then you need to find an Alexiter and get the code out of him. You said we could change the hybrid instead of killing him? We can try and change him with mana. If it doesn't work, the mana will poison him. Is that a problem? You think killing should be an easy decision? That thing hasn't hesitated to order the deaths of hundreds, thousands. There is a chance we can convert it, change it with mana. But change him or kill him, he must be stopped. Killing the hybrid is the only way to save Magellan. For all his knowledge and power, he must answer for what he has done. Whatever his plan is, it can't be worth the damage he's caused. I agree. While there is a chance we could stop the fighting and keep his knowledge, we would be risking all of Magellan to try. We can hope the mana will heal him as it is healing Magellan. Maybe we could force him onto a different path, but the safety of the planet must come first, even if that means killing him. The Alexiters say that the hybrid has a greater plan for all of us that he knows the nature of Elix and why it came to our world, that he has the power to see the future. Before we act, we should find out what the hybrid knows. If we don't gain the knowledge, we could pay the price for it. Well, if he has a plan that is supposed to benefit us, I haven't seen a sign of it. That thing only wants power. Listen to him if you must, but take this seedling into the chamber with you. You must attach it to the hybrid. That is how we will tame him or kill him. The last time I tried to confront Calix, he didn't come alone. There were Alps patrolling the area where we were to meet. I need to get him alone. Then you must choose a place yourself. Zardom's old hiding place, for instance. Maybe there you will get a chance to meet Calix alone. It's good that I know where and how I can challenge Calix. I will send Calix a message through my adjutor. I expect he will go there straight away. Then you should act now, before he decides to attack you. How far advanced is your plan to transmute the Elix? The planning is complete. If it works in practice, then all the Elix on Magellan should be transmuted. But I can't control that amount of magical energy on my own. I will need a strong mage to help me. Someone who truly understands the nature of Elix and mana. Then ask Kaya. Kaya has the ability, but as for the temperament, this isn't the time for impulsiveness. The magic we'd be channeling if she didn't follow orders. What other choice do you have? Well, bold times take bold decision. I'll have to trust her, but she won't listen to a request from me. You must ask her to do it. There's something oddly satisfying about being in this part of the story when it's just like, 
Here you go. Quest start. Quest, quest complete. Complete. Start. 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 Experience. Experience. Start. Quit. Quit. It's like so many notifications are happening. Oh my goodness. The crazy multi-layered desk. Yep, here it is. Went from being empty to having all of these. Oh boy.